Hello everyone, welcome to Depression to Expression. My name is Scott and today we're talking about food. How food affects mood. These top 10 foods that um, I, I'm encouraging you to research and to incorporate into your diet. Ask your doctor, again, do more research. I'm not a nutritionist, I'm not a doctor. I'm just a guy who reads a bit, experiments with his body and tries new things to make himself feel better. That's all I do, that's it. Now, this channel, is all about attacking depression and anxiety from every possible angle, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't, throw away the fluff, and keep all the good stuff. That's what this channel is all about. I'm not saying you're gonna eat these 10 foods and feel better right away and that's put all your eggs in one basket, I'm just gonna work on my diet, then that's it. No, it's not the way I've experienced um, depression, anxiety, and managing symptoms. It's more attack and remedy every angle. I'm gonna try these different foods, maybe a few, maybe one, two, see how I feel. But alongside that, I'm gonna do some therapy. And then how about some medication? And then how about some exercise and then meditation on the side? Attack it from all angles. This isn't the be all end all, okay? These foods are just to spark some ideas for you to do some more research and think about your diet. That's it, all right? Top 10 foods I'm encouraging you to try. Three, two, one, go. Number one, whole grains. Now there's already gonna be debate in the comments. Scott, whole grains, isn't that gluten? Gluten's bad for you, isn't it? If you're celiac, yes, like allergic to gluten, yes. And there's all these published books about how, how gluten and, and wheat, um, you know that book, The Wheat Belly? about how wheat destroys your brain and eats away at, at your neurons and makes you gain weight. Well, yeah, I could see gain weight because it's full of carbs and if you don't exercise, yeah, it just turns into fat. But just, just hold on, okay? Just hold on. Anything from porridge to brown rice to rye bread. The thing about whole grains is that they have vitamin B6, B12. Now, B12s have been studied and proven at some degree to help with depression. Okay, so that's one thing, and vitamin B9. The great thing about whole grains, guys, is they have a low glycemic index, meaning, meaning, if you're going to have bread in the morning, it's not gonna spike your blood sugar levels like, say, a can of Coke does, or a glass of orange juice. Okay, the lower glycemic index means you're gonna feel fuller for longer, and think of just, energy trickling through your blood throughout the day. So you stay full and you have that energy to maintain brain function. What happens when you drink a glass of orange juice, which a glass of orange juice can be like seven oranges squeezed in there. That's a shitload of sugar. It doesn't matter if it comes from an orange. And it's gonna rocket that blood sugar level. You're gonna feel, oh my God, jolt, and then you're gonna crash. Great thing about whole grains, low glycemic index, meaning you get sustained energy throughout the day. It just trickles in your bloodstream. It's a beautiful thing. Number two, quinoa, spelled K-E-E-N-W-A-H. No, that's not how it's spelled at all, but it should, right? Come on, English. Now, the great thing about quinoa and soy is it's the only vegetarian protein that has all nine essential amino acids. It's also very high in copper, manganese, magnesium, and uh, magnesium is actually proven to help migraine sufferers. I know it's funny because my dad has suffered from migraines since he was 20 years old. And just over the Christmas break, um, he had a terrible migraine where I'm downstairs, I can hear him crying uh, and he's upstairs two floors up and he's pounding on the ground and it lasted like 13, 14 hours, throwing up the whole deal, just completely debilitating. Now, magnesium doesn't help that. He's tried everything, <laughs> he's tried everything. If you have a migraine cure for my dad, and he's tried everything, all types of different therapy, and, and uh, he uses a, um, what's it called, a breathing machine for sleep apnea, because he has sleep apnea too. Um, you have any cures, let me know. Number three, almonds, almonds. You know what sucks about almonds? They're so expensive. Just like any nut, we're gonna talk about walnuts in a second, and, and even cashews, oh my God. 
I realize you can't afford these things, but let's talk about it anyways. So almonds have this magical brain ingredient called phenylalanine. I had to actually Google the pronunciation there. And it's an amino acid and it helps the production of dopamine. And dopamine is that feel good um, neurotransmitter where you know, you're rewarded with something and it's like, oh, that feels good. That's why every time you get a text or a like on your Facebook page, Dopamine surge! You feel like, and then you get that tent in your pants and you're like, e. no, just kidding. Uh, almonds are also very high in vitamin E and also have been uh, proven to reduce your cholesterol or the LDL bad cholesterol. Number four is pecans. Pecans, an ex, I know they're all expensive. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Excellent source of vitamin E actually has 19 vitamins and minerals. Also a great source of choline, uh, the chemical precursor to acetylcholine, the neurotransmitter, proven to slow down um, neuron or neurodegeneration. Pretty cool. The more neurons, the better, right? As long as you're uh, creating those nice pathways of positivity and not overthinking bad things and then you get bad pathways. I don't know what I'm talking about. Number five, didn't see this one coming, pumpkin seeds, pumpkin seeds. I don't like pumpkin seeds. Uh, Halloween people take them out of the pumpkin and they roast them in the oven. I don't, I don't think that's great. So they put like salt or seasoning on them, but the benefits are there. Very high in zinc pumpkin seeds and zinc is said to be used in the hippocampus, which is, um, there for long-term and short-term memory. The more zinc in there, the better, right? Eat your pumpkin seeds. They also have a very high amount of omega-3 and omega-6 uh, those fatty acids, you need those for the brain. The brain's all fat. You need fat in there. Sunflower seeds. If you haven't eaten sunflower seeds before, um, don't just go for the ones that are taken out of their shells already and, and put a bunch in your mouth. No, you have to work for them, okay? You get a bag of spits. I, have, I actually have spits. I have spits, hold on, hold on. I have spits. Check this out. So these are cracked pepper. Some go with the salt, some go with the plain. And you can, you load a bunch in your cheek. Anyways, suck on them. And you really gotta work for the seed. Uh, here, there's one. You bring it to the side and you chew that one. And then you work on the cheek. It's, it's an amazing thing. Avocados, mm, they are delicious. I love putting them in salad. Um, people do the, the toast and then cream cheese and avocado. That's disgusting. Or am I getting that mixed up? Anyways, I just have them in like salads. You can eat them on their own. You can put them in a smoothie, delicious. Yes, expensive. Yes, they are expensive. Everything that's good for you is expensive and the price of food, at least in Canada, is increasing. Fresh food is increasing, fresh produce. Government, you gotta do something. You gotta. Do. Farmers, excellent job. Keep doing what you're doing. But like, you wanna eat healthy and it's very hard to do so. Anyway, so avocados, very high in unsaturated fat, which increases blood flow, um, decreases blood pressure, great for hair health, skin health. And I actually wrote this down because I don't know how to exactly pronounce this. But the Aztecs named the avocado tree Ahuactl, A-H-U-A-C-A-T-L, Ahuacatl, or in English, testicle tree. And they named it that because avocados increase your libido. So the Aztecs were horny all the time. If your libido is a little down, you have a, have a quarter of an avocado. And see what happens. Number eight, eggs. I bet you didn't see this one coming. Now for those vegans, I'm sorry. I am sorry. And eggs are not essential. Just like all meat and animal products aren't essential. There are many healthy vegans out there. Eggs, you don't gotta do, okay? Fish, you don't have to do. You just have to supplement and get, get your uh, omega-3s and protein and vitamins elsewhere, okay? But eggs, also high in choline, which we talked about, tryptophan, which we also talked about, has every B vitamin and, and 
high in protein. And protein is essential for muscular growth and brain development, and we all know that. And number nine, green tea. Cannot stress this enough. If you don't like the taste of green tea, you can learn to love it. You can. You can force yourself to eat foods and then finally like it. That's what I did with olives. I hated olives. I ate one a day for like three weeks. Now I love olives. It's interesting, right? You can do that. Try it with green tea. Try it. What I do with green tea is I steep it for so long that it gets bitter. And I love that bitter taste. And after I have a cup, I actually am more thirsty after drinking it than before. Um, but I love green tea. The cool thing about green tea, it has antioxidants called polyphenols which actually uh, regulate your glucose levels and increase dopamine. And we talked about dopamine, how that's that reward neurotransmitter. Get a text, hang. well this time, have a sip of green tea, hang. feel good, feel real good. All right, try green tea. If you don't like the taste at first, try putting in a bit of honey, put a bit, 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 of, put a bit of honey in there and see how you like it. Number 10, last but not least, dark chocolate. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Now, just let me read this here that I printed off. Um, again, doing a bit of research. I'm doing research for all of you. Thank you for supporting the channel. Thank you. Uh, the cocoa bean was revered by the Mayans and Aztecs as its scientific name, Theobroma coco, means food of the gods. That's amazing. Very cool. Now, this is interesting. Uh, there's magnesium, a lot of magnesium in dark chocolate. 50% of people in industrialized countries, meaning US and Canada, are magnesium deficient. I don't know about that. Obviously, it depends on your diet, but 50% of people magnesium deficient? That's a little, that's a little hard to, uh, to believe. That was really the only good thing about the dark chocolate other than it has those antioxidants as well and can also lower blood pressure. Um, with dark chocolate, it just, I don't like milk chocolate anymore. It feels too waxy and sugary. I like the high cocoa, like 78, 80%. <laughs> those were the 10 foods that I would recommend trying. Now, again, I'm not a nutritionist, doctor. I don't know a lot about this stuff. Maybe you have suggestions and research you want to share with me. Please comment below and, and share some different foods that may have helped you. Maybe different supplements. I know we're talking about omega-3s and B vitamins and choline as a vitamin as well you can take. Um, please let me know. Please like. Please share. Again, the point of this channel, it's sharing, man. Sharing is caring. It's all about spreading the word of mental health, helping each other through tough times, helping us feel better be more content with our lives. A lot of that's psychology with the food. Some of it's diet and biology. That's what it comes down to, brain chemistry, things like that. So let's, uh, let's be nice to each other in the comments. Have an awesome day. Don't forget to subscribe. Take care.